Hi everyone. A hearty welcome to MyBo Webinar 10 on Clinical Pharmacy Services and Role of PharmD Students. Myself, Dr. Ishwar, welcome you all for today's webinar. Today we have with us Dr. K. Santosh Arun Kumar, Faculty at University College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Andhra University, Vishakapatna. So he has good experience in dealing with the PharmD students and conducting the clinical pharmacy services at King George Hospital. So today he is there with us to share his experiences and what are the different clinical pharmacy services that can be taken care by PharmD students. So now I request Dr. A. Rajshekar Reddy, our MyVo core team member, to introduce our today's speaker, Dr. K. Santosh Arun Kumar. Good afternoon, one and all. Myself, Dr. Rajshekar Reddy, working as an assistant professor in the Kale University. It's my privilege to introduce today's esteemed speaker, Dr. K. Santosh Arun Kumar. Dr. Santosh Arun Kumar, PhD, uh, recently working as, uh, presently working as faculty at University College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Andhra University, Vishakapatnam, Andhra Pradesh. He did his B Pharmacy from Sri Venkateshwara College of Pharmacy, Vikakulam. Later pursued PharmD post baccalaureate from JSS Dim to University, Mysore, Karnataka and received his PhD from Andhra University. He is a first batch PharmD graduate of India from JSS Dim to University. Dr. Arun has total nine years of research and teaching experience. To his credit, he published good number of papers in both national and international journals. He guided six MPharma and 10 PharmD students for their respective research projects. He is acting as a reviewer and editorial board member for several peer review journals. He participates actively in clinical services at famous hospital in Vishakapatnam, that is King George Hospital, famously known as KGH. Dr. Arun is involved in performing daily clinical pharmacy activities like ward round participation, treatment chart review, medication history interview, adverse drug reaction detection, assessment and reporting, patient medication counseling, identification and management of drug-drug interactions, provision of drug and poison information to physicians at King George Hospital, Vishakhapatnam, from December 2013 to till date. Dr. Arun is expertise in biomedical lit literature search and retrieval by using different databases such as Micromedics, Clinerex, Lexicomp, Drug Information, Medscape, Datis, IDIS, and Cochrane Library for the provision of and the drug information to the healthcare professionals. Dr. Arun has received several certifications for active participation in courses and workshops. Dr. Arun has work experience as a clinical research coordinator for three multi-centered global trials at JSS Medical College Hospital, Mysore. He has coordinated a phase two and phase three clinical trials for a multi-center global study as, as per international standards. Dr. Arun is a life member of several professional bodies like IPA, APTI, HRC, and VCC. In addition to the professional track, Dr. Arun has won first place in chess competition conducted by Andhra University of Pharmaceutical Sciences annual day celebrations in consecutively 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018. So with this brief introduction, I would like to uh, welcome Dr. Arun sir to take over the webinar. Thank you. So thank you very much, Dr. Rajshekar Reddy. Now, uh, without any further delay, uh, I invite our speaker, Dr. K.S. Arun Kumar onto the board. Hi, Dr. Arun. Hello, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Rajshekar sir, for the, your kind introduction. And I thank uh, the Maibo group, especially Ishwar sir, for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak uh, on today's topic. Uh, Maibo webinar 10. So, no services yeah. and role of family students yes yeah dr arun you can take over the session now it's, uh, it's your... definitely sir thank you so much sir a very good afternoon to the participants to our faculty members and my student friends who are uh, uh, in the in the who have taken such a pain and uh, for your time to come and uh, 
listen to this webinar. So I am Dr. K. S. Arun Kumar, faculty, AU College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Andhra University, Vishakhapatnam. I would like to share my experiences and inputs regarding today's topic: clinical pharmacy services and role of PharmD students. So coming to the overview of my topic. to introduce you regarding the clinical pharmacy a brief introduction regarding clinical pharmacy then why there is a need for clinical pharmacy services which is followed by the role of clinical pharmacist nothing but our role of pharmd students in the clinical pharmacy services and i would like to discuss regarding clinical pharmacy services one by one where i will I, i highlighted regarding the objectives or goals of each and every clinical pharmacy activity followed by the role of pharmd students in offering the clinical quality clinical pharmacy services which is followed by oski which is nothing but objective structured clinical examination and bps certification board of pharmacy specialty certifications and finally the conclusion so i would like the viewers to be familiarized with the uh, words uh, clinical excuse pharmacy. me excuse me dr arun sir excuse me dr arun yes sir uh, you please go with the powerpoint mode uh, keep it in a slide show mode the powerpoint slides okay sir sure is it good sir yeah fine yeah you can yeah yeah Excellent. sorry for the interruption you can proceed thank you thank you thank you so in order to familiarize with the terms clinical pharmacy clinical pharmacy is nothing but it's a set of functions which promote the safe effective and economic use of medicines for individual patients and whereas on the other hand pharmaceutical care involves cooperative patient centered system for which we achieve a specific positive patient outcomes now clinical pharmacy as we can see is a set of functions which are required to deliver pharmaceutical care pharmaceutical care involves patient centered system and positive patient outcomes is for what we all strive for so therefore in order to deliver a good pharmaceutical care we need to practice clinical pharmacy that is safe effective and economic use of medicines so all pharmacy students and all clinical pharmacists work and put their efforts to deliver safe effective and economic use of medicines now clinical pharmacy by definition it is the recent and variably implemented form of practice it encourages the pharmacists to directly engage with the patients and their problems to encounter with the medicines that they encounter with the medicines so direct in the sense where we directly review the treatment chart of the patients where in the treatment chart we will see for the appropriateness and efficiency of the prescription then from which the other clinical pharmacy activities like uh, drug information or identification of an area or drug interaction other uh, activities will start so treatment chart review is the starting point for initiation of other clinical pharmacy activities we also directly engage with the patients to counsel them regarding their medicines regarding their disease and also regarding their lifestyle modifications required clinical pharmacy is an approach to apply both the principles of pharmaceutical care that is patient centered focus and also regarding special skills that are required for a clinical pharmacist now why these special skills are required it is required to optimize medication therapy that is individualization of your therapy promote health wellness and of course the disease prevention now clinical pharmacists are a group of logical professionals who are in clinic qualified professionally and also competent enough to meet the clinical needs and to participate always with a medication medical practitioner to achieve a safer and effective use of drugs they all all healthcare professionals including clinical pharmacists they work 
consistently to uh, for a, to contribute for a better patient healthcare outcomes now they are involved in assisting the and guiding the prescribers and the patients for optimal use of drugs where we achieve minimal side effects and also we maximize the efficacy of the treatment that is given to the patient now a clinical pharmacist should have extensive education on the fields like biomedical pharmaceutical social behavioral and clinical sciences so in these areas a clinical pharmacist is required to have an extensive education and in most of the countries clinical pharmacists have a basic degree of doctor of pharmacy that is pharmd degree clinical pharmacists also care for the patients in all healthcare settings so in various specializations clinical pharmacists work like oncology cardiology pulmonology and pediatrics so in various specializations skin specialized skin clinical pharmacists are present and they are working in collaboration with the physicians nurses and other healthcare professionals now i would like to add a glimpse on the history how this clinical pharmacy has developed eventually and the roles of clinical pharmacists now it all started in late 1960s where industrialization has uh, overtook the job of compounding where our primary job of pharmacists is compounding the drugs but due to industrialization the role of compounding was uh, took by the industry and we are left with only dispensing the finished products now it also made the clinical pharmacists to work or to intrude in the uh, clinical side where in 1960s clinical pharmacy used to be referred as a ward pharmacy in uk and us and the main reason for introducing of your ward pharmacy in the hospitals is due to lack of poor medicines control systems so this made due to lack of poor medicine systems control systems this made the clinical pharmacists uh, to emerge Here in late 1970s the ward pharmacy took a transition and it was termed as clinical pharmacy because we are very much confined to the hospitals in 80s the actual growth of clinical pharmacy took place and the pharmacists or the clinical pharmacists are able to promote the use of cost effective medicines in the hospital now even in late 1980s the role of clinical pharmacists Uh, are restricted only to cost effective medicines but it is in late 1990s where the role of clinical pharmacists was actually into the drug use process now in uk the drug use process indicators the drug use process indicators uh, like need for a drug selection of dosage regimen or drug regimen provision of a drug the role of clinical pharmacists in drug administration monitoring of drug therapy counseling of a patient and of course evaluating the effectiveness of the treatment these all roles of the clinical pharmacists were taken up in the late 1990s but in spite of having Uh, efficiency in uh, able to, uh, clinical pharmacists are able to do all these drug process indicators but uh, most of the physicians had high acceptance rates only for uh, uh, three uh, drug process indicators one is your need for drug where we are allowed to suggest the doctors why there is a need for the drug and second one is to select a drug regimen clinical pharmacists used to participate in selecting and advising their doctor what drug and what regimen in what dose and how, what duration the drug should be given physician also accepted the clinical pharmacists to counsel the patient and to evaluate the effectiveness of the treatment so these are three main indicators to which uh, clinical pharmacists are confined and also the high acceptance rate of the physicians was seen now come to the industrialization i told you that in 1960s industrialization has took place 
and it led to the uh, increasing number of pharmaceutical products which are available for human consumption and due to this greater advances in medicines and scientists and science and technology and also drug screening process methods there is a ra rapid expansion in the availability of therapeutic options now the doctor or the physician who is in the decision making role is now having a lot of uh, options therapeutic options to select so he is in a bit of confused state now this is an environment this create an environment for the evaluation of a clinical pharmacist where it has he has created due to the expansion of your drug availability due to the increased complexity of your therapeutic options and also increased awareness of the potential harm that a drug can cause or the drug therapy cause also along with the expansion of drug therapy an opportunity for incidence of drug related morbidity and mortality has also increased now the clinical pharmacist has a very good role in avoiding the morbid and mor mor mortality conditions coming to the clinical pharmacy services that we usually offer in our uh, daily ward rounds of a pharmacy or a pharm pharm pharmacy practice these are the activities which we perform as a daily routine in our ward rounds first one is a ward round participation a ward round participation is a very very important uh, role or activity where a farm farm the person or the farm the practice person a student will participate in the ward round along with the physician so a uh, ward round participation it, it involves uh, the pharmacist to go to the ward rounds along with the doctor to check the treatment or to review the treatment chart and also to identify any drug related problems now another uh, second activity is medication chart review i told you that medication chart review is the first or the starting point of uh, origination or uh, activities of other activities like drug information and patient counseling and medication history interview so without reviewing a treatment chart no, uh, a pharmacist cannot be expected to identify any drug related problems now provision of drug information and poison information the active role of a clinical pharmacist uh, is denoted by the uh, role is denoted by the uh, how he performs or how he delivers the drug information or he communicates to the doctor fourth one is your patient counseling where direct counseling to the patient uh, will be seen uh, patient will be counseled regarding the medications lifestyle modifications and the disease pharmacists are also involved in identifying the drug related problems where there are around eight drug related problems which are identified that i'll discuss uh, in the next slide and uh, identification reporting and uh, monitoring of adverse drug reactions and also in pharmacist interventions so making interventions the first activity ward round participation where the main objective or ward round participation is to understand the clinical status of the patient so what is the diagnosis of the patient what are the signs and symptoms of a patient how the patient uh, what is the patient medical history and uh, what is the understanding of the patient regarding his own clinical status and how the disease is progressing in that particular patient is what uh, pharmacist uh, looks like uh, looks into and uh, during this uh, ward round participation a current planned investigations and therapeutic goals are to be set and another objective is to second objective is to review and follow up the progress of each and every inpatient and health outcomes also ward round participation enables us to decrease or to identify this adverse drug events which may improve eventually the patient care and reduce the length of hospital stay and healthcare costs ward round participation also promotes rational drug use so what is the role of farm the students during ward round participation so before the actual ward round starts i always advise it is always advisable for the farm the students to make a pre ward rounds 
well ahead of the actual war drones. Now, before the actual war drones, uh, pharmacist should uh, go for a pre-war drone where he is expected to identify and prioritize the drug-related problems what he has identified. If more than one drug-related problem is identified, then he has to prioritize which drug-related problem should be discussed. Only the potential drug-related problems are to be uh, prioritized and uh, should be discussed with the healthcare professional during the actual ward rounds. And pharmacists should prepare for a remedial action after they identify a drug-related problem. So bringing uh, the drug-related problem to the notice of a doctor should also be uh, uh, accompanied by a remedy or the uh, remedial action that should be taken place uh, for the uh, drug-related problem that is identified. Now, always a uh, suggestion or the remedial action should be taken up from the uh, standard references and you should be always be backed up with an appropriate ref reference. For example, a British National Formulary or American Hospital Formulary System, AHFS. Now, we have to avoid discussions or arguments concerning with diagnosis because diagnosis is entirely uh, considered with the, uh, with the doctors. So doctors are the one who are uh, concerned with the diagnosis and we are concerned with the treatment. So any discussion or arguments which are leading to uh, arguments which are leading with the, uh, concerning the diagnosis should be avoided. And we have to maintain very good uh, in, uh, interprofessional relationships with the doctors. We also should maintain individual patient profiles. We have to summarize the information and relevant, which is relevant to the patient's drug therapy. We have to work closely and communicate effectively with all healthcare professionals, including physicians, nurses, and also uh, uh, residents who are present in the wards. Apart from uh, communication, the main prerequisite for a clinical pharmacist is to have a sound and good clinical knowledge. A good interprofessional relationship are the prerequisites and uh, we have to respond to all the queries what the doctor asks and we have to answer the queries and communicate it to effect effectively to the doctors. We should also resolve the difference of opinion with the physicians or nurses in a very respectful manner. So it's very important to maintain a good interprofessional relationships for a successful ward round participation. And also we have to document all the recommendations or the interventions that are made by a clinical pharmacist in a well-designed documentation form. For each and every clinical activity, what we do, we, we also document uh, in a well-designed documentation form. Now, the first and foremost activity is after in the water on participation is your treatment chart review. Now, this treatment chart review coming to the objectives, one should ensure that appropriateness of medication orders were, uh, were ensured and uh, to optimize the patient's drug therapy and also to identify and minimize drug related problems. Now, all these current and related medication orders should be reviewed for appropriateness and also for completeness. Oh, the role of pharmacy students involves a pharmacy student is expected to always review the treatment chart in accordance with the nurse notes or the medication administration chart. So when a doctor prescribes a medication, you should uh, also look at the nurse's notes such that the medication what is given, uh, what is administered by the nurse is what is prescribed. So any deviation or the, any transcription errors or any uh, missed dose or any other uh, medication errors can be identified if you always review a treatment chart in accordance with the medication administration chart. Secondly, we have to check for drug related problems, especially like drug duplication or drug interactions and incompatibilities. Drug duplication in the sense the same drug can be prescribed 
there is a chance that a drug a same drug with different brands is prescribed in the same prescription and per, and the patient may be taking the same drug twice which may lead to overdose so these kind of drug duplications should be identified always uh, the you know in during water on participation the pharm d person or clinical pharmacist should have a habit of converting the brand names if it is prescribed in the prescription the brand name should be converted into a generic name so such that uh, uh, the drug duplication and uh, interactions or incompatibilities can be identified and it will be more easier for a pharmacist to identify drug related problems now one has to check for appropriateness of drug dosage now the maximum dosage limit for the drug uh, for example diclofenac the maximum daily dosage limit is 150 mg but if it exceeds more than 150 mg then therefore we have an opportunity to intervene now regarding the dosage form suppose doctor has pre prescribed it as an iv but the, the nurse has administered in the form of an oral so a pa patient may not get a benefit uh, with an oral because iv we can give a treatment immediately so regarding the dosage form regarding the frequency regarding the duration of use and the route of administration whether uh, the route of administration is perfect or not and the time of administration whether is before food or after food and uh, how to take the medication so all these uh, 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 drug related problems should be identified and we have to check for the appropriateness of usage drug dosage adjustments should be made wherever necessary for example if you have a patient with renal failure or hepatic failure or it is a, if it is a, he is a patient is a, a pediatric patient now you have to adjust the dose or calculate the dose by using the formulas for a pediatric dose you can use young's formula or dilling's formula to calculate the pediatric dose from an adult dose and for a renal dose adjustment we use a coprof gold formula where we can uh, based on the serum creatinine level and age and weight of the patient we calculate the dose uh, of a patient who is suffering from a kidney disease also for a hepatic hepatic failure patients and also sometimes for a anti tubercular therapy we need to calculate the dose and adjust the dose according to the body weight of the person whereas when uh, it comes to your oncology where uh, drug regimens need to be uh, calculated based on the body surface area of the patient so dosage adjustments wherever applicable should be identified by the pharmacist and it should be calculated and you have to suggest the doctors that this is the standard treatment that is recommended or dose adjustment that is recommended now especially with respect to age body weight bsa and of course i told you regarding the renal function and liver function now coming to the another activity your drug information services now everyone is aware that modified systematic approach is what followed in delivering drug information services the main objective for drug information service is to provide an updated drug information which is very much current medical information which should be relevant to what the requester has asked us and it should be critically examine the data about the medications now critical examination involves retrieving of the data identifying the source of data in which the information is available now you have to tailor the information according to the query that the pay, uh, doctor has asked and you have to uh, update it or uh, write it well, uh, or communicate it well to the doctor whether uh, he has asked for a verbal information or a written information or both now also the main ob another objective of drug information services is to enhance the quality of patient care and meet the demands from the healthcare professionals now quality of patient care can only be enhanced when the drug information provided by the clinical pharmacist is used for the better patient care 
also the drug information may be sometimes asked by the requested by the uh, healthcare professionals for updating their own knowledge so you have to enquire the requester the purpose of the drug information whether they are going to use this information in the patient for the better outcomes or they want to update their knowledge or it is for their own purpose so regard based on that the drug information should be tailored and it should be given and always it should be accompanied with the standard references now the role of uh, pharmacy students uh, in providing of your drug information services first thing is they should be voracious reader they should be uh, trained to identify the different sources of drug information that are available with them especially the primary resources secondary and tertiary resources now the primary resources involve the indexing and abstracting services where the journals and etc will be there then secondary resources nothing but the accessing to the databases like micromedics clinirex medscape and of course uh, the lexicon for drug information resources so uh, and tertiary resources involves uh, includes your textbooks pharmacopias compendias etc now identification or identifying a better source of information is very much important and uh, the clinical pharmacist should be knowledgeable about where the data has been stored and to retrieve the data how to retrieve it how to search it the search techniques etc should be uh, developed that can be done only through tra appropriate training he should also be capable to evaluate the data critically by looking at evaluating the scientific literature and to obtain the standard and obtain it from a standard and reliable resources now the information which was collected should be applied to the situation to the of the patient so patient's background information should be collected in order to apply the information to the given current situation now after you apply it after you provide the information as requested i told you that the doctor may request you to just uh, give the information verbally written or both you can give the written response and explain the drug information verbally in a timely manner now timely manner will give you how quality the quality of service suppose the doctor asks a uh, clinical pharmacist to give the information within an half an hour half an hour now if you answer the query after 2 hours then uh, it's not uh, considered to be a professional one so in order to be uh, a professional service so within the recommended time the information should be given so based on the recommendations of the requester how they how they request the information we have to prepare the drug information accordingly and you have to give the drug information and most important thing each and every activity should be documented in appropriate documentation form for the uh, and the response what it was given should be taken a copy should be taken and should be documented for the future reference these are the major drug related queries that we usually get from the requesters or the physicians especially drug related queries uh, relating to the indications and use of a drug dose and frequency of the uh, drug doses adjustments that are required for renal failure hepatic failure and uh, uh, pediatric patients in special populations uh, the, especially the safety profile of a drug in pregnancy and in elderly use of a drug in elderly and pediatric patients regarding the adverse drug reactions that a drug can cause drug information regarding drug drug interactions that uh, that are involved in a prescription the duration of therapy and uh, related to the mechanism of action and pharmacology of a particular drug regarding the poison information and if there is any specific antidote for the poison that was consumed that should be uh, given and uh, drug regarding the drug availability whether the drug is available in the market or it is uh, available in what brand name and what cost etc so cost and administration techniques how to administer the drug 
and also uh, administration technique of the drug by using special devices special devices for example um, inhalers by using spacer or by using uh, uh, use usage of your insulin syringes how to use the insulin syringe etc so in, uh, also a rota inhaler how to use it how to maintain it so these are the administration techniques and of course the storage conditions so some drugs need to be uh, stored in uh, freezing conditions some to be stored in the room temperature some to be stored in the uh, fridge for uh, eight, below 8 degree 8 to 10 degrees centigrade so for such drugs special storage conditions should be mentioned or uh, given in the drug information now coming to the patient counseling this is the activity which were which will takes place most commonly where all patients who are admitted in the inpatients especially should be counseled so we counsel both inpatients and outpatients but uh, as the number of outpatients are more so we may not counsel each and every patient who visits the outpatient clinics but yes inpatients should be counseled all inpatients who are admitted ideally should be counseled now the coming to the objectives why this patient counseling is required so in this patient counseling you, a person of our farm of clinical pharmacist will provide an information regarding and advice or assistance to the patient regarding the disease about the medication and also about the lifestyle modifications needed for the pharmacist sorry needed for the patient to incorporate such that uh, the better outcomes of the treatment can be obtained it also ensures that it also maximizes the patient medication adherence or compliance to the treatment plan now most of the patients uh, are not adherent to the are found to be not adherent to the medications so to ensure that patients take their medications direct uh, the 100% compliance to be maintained the patient should be counseled so effective counseling will make such an impact that patient may take the medication regularly and of course uh, at a regular point of time and uh, to, uh, they complete stick to their treatment plan now also to improve therapeutic outcomes and minimize medication errors and also the adverse effects patient counseling helps the patient to uh, improve the therapeutic outcomes now coming to the role of pharmacy students there are four main steps for patient counseling now one has to prepare for the session where he knows uh, he should know regarding the patient background and the medication details so before counseling the patient the pharmacist should know the details of the patient like uh, what is the diagnosis of the patient what is the age of the patient, demographic details of the patient then uh, what are the medications prescribed for the patient what are the medications and what are the side effects that patient may likely develop and patients to be warned that he may develop this uh, adverse drug reaction and he should be advised so advices should be written uh, and should be communicated effectively in the counseling session so preparation for the session is very much important so if you don't prepare for a session and if you directly uh, talk to a patient you may not uh, give the information effectively or counsel the patient effectively regarding his disease and the medications so after knowing the patient details and patient medication details what the patient is using then you have to introduce yourself to the patient that i am clinical pharmacist and i am here to counsel you regarding the disease and medications that you are taking i will make you learn about what what is the reason for the disease what you are suffering from and each and every medication the dosage then how to take a medication at what time i have to take a medication and the benefits that a patient may get by taking the uh, medication and by sticking to the treatment plan so these all informations that should be uh, given to the patient should be uh, given to the patient and the patient should be ensured that the counseling will improve his health outcomes now counseling content step is where the actual counseling starts always a patient should uh, be uh, made comfortable by counseling the uh, while counseling because he may have a fear 
and uh, he may not communicate well with the uh, pharmacist such that uh, uh, because uh, if, it, if he is uh, having a history of a social history of drinking or smoking or any other thing he may not communicate with you effectively so therefore uh, we should make uh, the patient comfortable you have to introduce that i am here for, uh, for better health care better health care outcomes and anything that you wish you tell you can tell freely and the most important thing is a uh, patient should be counseled in a private chamber he should not be counseled in the wards or where he feels uncomfortable or uh, uh, where uh, other patients are present and of course during the actual counseling uh, the body language and the language with which uh, the patient is comfortable that should be used so if a patient is a uh, uh, patient's mother tongue is telugu then you have to communicate effectively only in telugu and uh, open ended questions should be asked because if it is a closed ended question we can't get more information from the patient so it will not lead to an effective counseling so a, pay, a pharmacist is required to have good communication skills he should be also a good listener such that he should listen to the what patient says and they have to reply by giving a remedy or by giving a good suggestion for them now coming to the closing of the session always the points that was that were given to the or uh, that were suggested to the patient should be ascertained so you should ask the patient to tell again about how you will take the medication number 1 then patient will tell you regarding the medication that so this medication number 1 should be taken uh, along with uh, diet uh, along with food for twice a daily for 10 days etc so if the patient uh, uh, is, there is a if there is a mistake by the patient then you have to ascertain the patient with the knowledge so understanding of the patient should be ascertained so only if the patient uh, understands well then the counseling will be effective now in counseling the patients you have to prioritize the patients the priority should be given to patients who are suffering from chronic illness like diabetes hypertension and uh, if the patients are on special devices like inhalers rota inhalers and patients who are suffering with uh, acute infections example for tuberculosis or pneumonia so these patients should be counseled first and also patients who are on polypharmacy for using multiple medications patients who are elderly and ex- patients who are about to discharge so these patients need to be prioritized and of course ideally every patient who are, who is an inpatient should be counseled at the time of discharge a counseling aids which are nothing but if a patient uh, there are many barriers during a counseling suppose it may be a patient related barrier or a system related barrier or a pharmacist related barrier now coming to the patient related barrier patient uh, may be uh, having uh, any discomfort or patient may be uh, disabled in the sense he may be having a, a hearing impairment or uh, he may be old or he may be uh, having a impairment in the vision where he can't uh, listen properly see properly so in order to counsel the patient uh, we have to uh, use certain aids like uh, pictograms leaflets etc now patient's barrier uh, apart from patient barrier there is also a pharmacist related barrier where the counseling pharmacist if he is not uh, familiar with the mother tongue of the patient he can't communicate eff- effectively so to overcome such barrier the pharmacist should take an uh, help of your another pharmacist who is familiar with that mother language mother tongue or the language the uh, person speaks also counseling aids include placards pictograms and of course the leaflets or pamphlets now coming to the drug related problems there are eight drug related problems which are which are to be identified during ward round participation and treatment chart review pharmacists should look for or should identify should resolve and to prevent potential and actual drug related problems that a patient should 
patients are likely to be likely to be uh, suffering from a patient uh, uh, who is present in the ward if he is taking medications definitely there will be a drug related problem which is waiting for us to be identified so to maximize the therapeutic effect and minimize the risk of the cost of treatment is another objective to uh, for identifying your drug related problems and to educate and promote the patient health is also one of the main objectives of identifying your drug related problems so these are the eight drug related problems a pharmacist is expected to identify so if there is an untreated indication for example if the patient is suffering from uh, fever and vomiting but in the treatment there is no paracetamol or any antiemetic or like an ondansetron so this is an untreated indications so a pharmacist should keenly observe the signs and symptoms of the patient and also he has to note down the prescription whether each and every uh, symptom of the patient is treated or not now treatment without indication now the for example if a person is prescribed with uh, uh, iron iron supplements but the patient uh, hemoglobin level is normal so you can you can identify it that patient is taking a, a, a treatment is given without an indication P patient never complained of any fever but there is a paracetamol which was prescribed and sometimes there is been improper drug selection where uh, a metformin was prescribed but the patient is not has not having a history of diabetes so that is improper drug selection now too little drug or too much drug that is sub therapeutic dose and of course overdose so the drug when it is prescribed it will be prescribed in divided doses now if it is a too little drug then it leads to fail therapeutic failure now it is if it is more or if it is an overdose which exceeds the maximum daily limit dose then it may lead to uh, certain toxicities which were developed now one has to identify or, or play an uh, active role in identification uh, assessment and of course reporting of adverse drug reactions and monitoring of adverse drug reactions identification of potential drug drug interactions in the prescription and of course if there is any non compliance or if any missed dose then we have to identify them so these are the eight drug related problems a pharmacist is expected to identify now what is the in order to uh, uh, give a successful uh, drug related problem in, as, in order to be success uh, in you uh, in identifying the drug related problems we, a pharmacist has to collect the information of the patient he has to organize it in a manner uh, and he has to document it in the form that was developed for each and every activity he has to maintain a patient specific medical information so we all have the habit of writing the patient profile forms but uh, we don't uh, uh, participate or don't uh, uh, put an extra effort in identifying the drug related problems now after collecting and organizing and maintaining the patient specific medical uh, information we have to set a therapeutic goal where many therapeutic options are available for the part particular diagnosis what is made to the patient now we have to evaluate and individualize the drug regimens that are available and uh, a drug regimen in the sense the dosage form the dose Uh, frequency of the drug the route of administration and duration of the drug all together is known as your drug regimen so you have to evaluate and individualize the drug regimen because no two patients with the diagnosed with the same disease will have the same uh, uh, drug regimens so you have to individualize based on the patient characteristics you have to review and uh, modify the farm uh, modify if necessary the pharmaceutical care plan that was designed always in co in concern with the healthcare team or the patient so respecting patient choices is also an important one where if patient is not comfortable with the tablet 
he should be prescribed with syrup. If he is a pediatric patient and cannot swallow a tablet, we have to respect the choice of the patient. You have to prescribe it with a syrup. And of course, monitoring the health outcomes where uh, risk benefit ratio should be seen. Always the benefit should overweigh the risk. So the benefit from giving the treatment should be more than the risk that it causes. Coming to the adverse drug reactions, it is one of the most actively done performed activity by the clinical pharmacists where adverse drug reactions uh, uh, are identified based on the patient's counseling and medication history by taking medication history. So by taking medication history, we can identify whether the patient is allergic to certain medications. By identifying so, if a patient is allergic to the medias, so and so, so for example, if a patient is allergic to penicillin, now if a patient is having any infection and was admitted now in the hospital, now a doctor should be doctor should be alerted that patient is already having an allergic to the penicillin and therefore penicillin antibiotics and cephalosporins where there is a cross sensitivity should be avoided in such patients because you have to avoid the uh, adverse drug reaction. So an adverse drug reaction can be prevented if the allergies are known. But if allergies are not known, then you have to move the uh, next step where you have to assess it. So whenever there is an adverse event, adverse event and adverse uh, drug reaction are not synonyms. Most of them think that adverse events and adverse reactions are synonyms and uh, they can be used interchangeably, but no. Adverse event is an event or an untoward event but it was not confirmed that it are not uh, causality assessment was not established for that particular for a particular drug suppose a patient has developed dizziness now we don't know uh, for, for dizziness was developed or this, uh, there's no causality assessment was done to confirm that certainly the dizziness is due to a particular drug so until and unless it is not confirmed that it is caused by the particular drug you should always address it as only adverse event. But if the causality assessment was performed and if you are sure and certain that the uh, drug adverse drug reaction is due to a particular drug, then after re-challenging and de-challenging the drug, it is confirmed that the drug is responsible. So it's a drug is the culprit. Then you can call it as an adverse drug reaction. So for adverse reaction, in order to call it as an adverse reaction, you should be specific. And if you, if you are not sure whether the adverse uh, reaction or adverse event is uh, uh, due to any, uh, we, the, what, what is the drug that has caused the event, then you should always address it as adverse event, but not an adverse drug reaction. Now, the objective is also to identify assess, manage, and report the adverse drug reactions. Of course, it is, should be suspected adverse drug reaction. You need not to be sure to report an adverse drug reaction. If the patient develops any untoward reaction, you should always be suspectful. Suppose if there, is a, there are seven to eight drugs in a prescription, now you need to get back to the literature, you should uh, see which drug has this particular uh, event. Now you have to uh, be suspicious on one or two drugs for which percentage incidence of the adverse drug reaction is more. Then that should be selected as a suspected drug. And you should also uh, furnish the information in the adverse drug reaction report form uh, with the, uh, the regarding the other drugs which were also used to, which were also prescribed uh, for these drugs. Our causality assessment should be performed by using uh, Naranjo scale and WHO probability scale. These are the two scales which were used to uh, see the causality assessment. Now coming to the role of family students, detecting an ADR, for detecting an ADR, you have to obtain the current and past medical history of a patient, whether he's, uh, I already discussed regarding 
we have to collect the information regarding previous drug or food allergies now patient counseling should be done regarding the usage of otc medications or if the patient is uh, using a uh, medications of other systems like ayurveda and uh, homeopathy or yunani we should also check for abrupt cessation of any medicines because some medications like anti epileptic drugs uh, and of course some anti hypertensive drugs if they are uh, stopped or cessated abruptly there is a chance of withdrawal symptoms which may develop especially with anti epileptic drugs and anti psychiatric drugs and with uh, some anti uh, hypertensive drugs rebound hypertension may be seen in some patients so abrupt cessation of drugs may also cause some withdrawal effects and of course uh, some uh, adverse effects which will be uh, which should be recorded and we should be checked then if you know the cause of a particular adverse drug reaction then it will be easy to treat it so it is very necessary to check for abrupt cessation of any medicines and time temporal relationship between the administration of a drug and the development of a uh, suspected adverse drug reaction should be seen now time temporal relationship means uh, if you take a tablet and uh, if you develop a reaction after a one hour then there is a, a sufficient time temporal relationship but if you take a tablet and if the reaction has developed within uh, minutes or within few seconds then it should not be attributed to that because there is no uh, sufficient time to temporal relationship because for a tablet to show its action or to show any adverse effects it should get a dissolution it dissolved then uh, absorbed then it should uh, reach the peak and it should cause so for this oral as absorption it takes around 30 to 40 minutes but if the reaction has developed within 15 minutes or within 10 minutes then there is no proper time temporal relationship to associate this drug with the to the particular reaction that was developed so if there is no proper time temporal relationship between the administration of the drug and development of the suspected reaction then you should uh, exclude the drug and also if there is any possible involvement of non drug causes especially disease causes suppose other uh patient complains of some uh, dizziness now this may be a symptom of a disease patient may complain of vomiting but it may be a symptom of a disease so it should not be to uh, it should also uh, uh, identify the possible non drug causes and you should eliminate those things now outcomes of a reaction upon a dechallenging of a drug and rechallenging of a drug should also be recorded but this de challenge and re challenge is not ethical to do and if it is only uh, with the, uh, if it is if it is very much required then uh, one can take the permission of ethics institution human ethics committee to perform a de challenge and re challenge now what is this de challenge and re challenge the challenge what is a challenge if you are, if a drug is given to the patient for the first time it is known as challenge and if you stop the drug or uh, stop taking the drug then it is known as de challenge now when a patient is given or is challenged with a particular drug if he develops any adverse drug reactions for suppose you think if you if we uh, take an example of skin reaction or rashes now if it is developed uh, uh, due to a drug now if you are suspecting a particular drug now if you uh, de challenged or stop taking the drug now we have to observe the symptoms that was developed the rashes if rashes are subsided then it is definitely due to the drug if rashes are not subsided uh, within 2 days or 3 days then uh, that's uh, it's not due to the drug it may be due to another reaction or it may be due to another causes or another drug now re challenge is nothing but after de challenge if the uh, suspected reaction has decreased and upon re challenge again introducing the drug again giving the patient the same drug and even if rashes reappear then it is a, a double confirmation that the particular adverse drug reaction is caused by that particular drug 
So these de-challenge and re-challenge are performed to confirm that a particular drug is related to a particular uh, adverse event. So role of pharmacists in reporting an ADR. So generally, when we report an ADR, you need not to be sure. And uh, a suspected that adverse drug reaction can be reported immediately by taking a form of adverse re re drug reaction form. And uh, the reporting system, what we commonly adopted is spontaneous reporting system in our ward rounds, in our daily ward rounds. The spontaneous reporting system involves reporting the suspected adverse drug reaction in the, uh, uh, in the form that was provided. And uh, we have to ensure that certain uh, uh, columns which were uh, marked as a compulsory or with the asterisks should be uh, uh, filled and uh, adequate information is given, collected and reported in the ADR form. One can report an ADR if he is suspicious and need not to be sure, as I told you. And of course, you have to encourage all healthcare professionals as a uh, farm person or the clinical pharmacist. Under-reporting should, uh, under-reporting is the main cause of uh, where uh, uh, there is a under-reporting of uh, adverse drug reactions in India, especially, and that has resulted in the introduction of Pharmacovigilance Program of India, PVPI, where a Pharmacovigilance Technical Associate was appointed especially to encourage the physicians and other healthcare professionals to report areas. So there is an under-reporting very much in our Indian settings. And with the introduction of Pharmacovigilance Program of India, uh, this under-reporting was minimized and effective uh, ADR reporting was seen. And patients also, uh, sorry, patients also are, uh, can report the ADRs. So uh, five to six years ago, only the healthcare professionals are very much actively involved in reporting adverse drug reactions. But now uh, CDSCO, uh, Central Drug Standard Control Organization, in association with the uh, national uh, IPC, uh, they have come up with uh, uh, forms with the multilinguistic. In the sense, it, for the idea reporting forms are available in all languages like Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, and even in Hindi. Now, patient who are uh, uh, having some knowledge regarding reporting an area can download the form, or if it is provided by the uh, healthcare professional, can report directly. And also, there is an application which was uh, recently introduced by pharmacy counselor, pharmacy uh, by the program of PVPA program, Pharmacovision Program of India. That we can download it from Play Store, where we can uh, uh, directly report the adverse drug reaction by filling all the columns which are provided in the application, which was the, created by IPC, Indian Pharmacopoeal Commission. Now, what is the role of PharmD students in managing an adverse drug reaction? So to manage an adverse drug reaction, so immediate withdrawal of the suspected drug is what the first thing what we have to do because uh, if you uh, remove if we withdraw the suspected drug the reaction cannot can be subsided and uh, consider dose reduction if the reaction of the if the reaction is dose related dose dependent or dose related suppose if you increase the dose and uh, there is an increase in the uh, uh, severity of the reaction then it is known as dose dependent reaction. In such cases, you have to go for a uh, dose reduction or use a least minimal possible dose. Or you have to replace it with an alternative drugs. If alternative drugs are available, then you have to uh, consider replacing it. Now, we should have to administer specific antidotes if available. And if not available, you have to go for a symptomatic treatment. Now, symptomatic treatment is uh, seen on, as given only for suspected reactions. We have to monitor the patients after uh, uh, giving uh, or after uh, considering the reduction in dose or after replacing them with an alternative drug. 
you have to monitor the patients who are at risk especially elderly patients who are taking multiple medications like polypharmacy and who are suffering from chronic diseases multiple diseases like ckd copd and uh, diabetes hypertension or cardiovascular diseases so these are the patients uh, who are more likely to or predisposed to develop adverse drug reactions so monitoring patients who are elderly who are taking polypharmacy and of course who are having multiple diseases is very much important coming to the most important uh, activity pharmacist intervention now pharmacist intervention will directly result in change of the therapy therefore uh, pharmacist intervention will provide us to direct and responsible medical related care for the purpose of achieving definite outcomes that improves the patient's qual health related quality of life so therefore while making an intervention as it makes a direct impact on the patient's health related quality of life you should uh, be uh, you should make sure that the information or the suggestion what we are giving to the healthcare professional is a uh, cross checked by a lecturer or by a, another clinical pharmacist you have to be uh, accompanied with the certain uh, references which were in support to your intervention and you have to intervene and also discuss the intervention with the doctor concerned doctor now intervention also improves the efficiency of the prescription process and improves the patient safety now interventions uh, are made in a lot of interventions are made in a accordance in accordance with the healthcare professionals interventions also improves the prescription accuracy and also the patient safety now these are the types of interventions uh, that pharmacists will uh, pharmacists are known to do now these type of interventions include wrong dose wrong drug wrong dosage form wrong drug in the sense if the wrong drug is prescribed for the patient suppose the patient is not uh, suffering from diabetes but it, uh, he was prescribed with the metformin now that may be a wrong drug wrong dose suppose digoxin Uh, it is a very narrow therapeutic is having a narrow therapeutic index now if we the maximum dose maximum daily dose of a digoxin is uh, 0.5 mg 0.5 mg now if, if, if it is prescribed as 50 mg then you have to intervene because it can it is a severe inter, in, uh, for intervention in the sense it cause can it, it can be causes a severe toxicity in the patient so therefore it is a a severe case and patient needs a uh, pharmacist needs to intervene now dosage form if the pa do patient is a pediatric patient or patient is unconscious now if it is a pediatric patient you cannot swallow a tablet a syrup should be considered as a appropriate dosage form for the patient if the patient is unconscious then you have to always go for uh, injectables instead of tablets or capsules or any other oral dosage forms coming to the wrong duration of therapy some drugs uh, which were given can be of wrong duration of therapy but especially when it comes to antibiotics some antibiotics are uh, misused and of course rationality is also not seen in most of the prescriptions so duration of antibiotic and uh, uh, suppose it, if it is a penicillin antibiotic or a cephalosporin antibiotic it will be usually uh, of uh, 7 to 14 days but we see many prescriptions uh, that uh, they were prescribed for one two days or three days and they will be stopped abruptly and again another class of antibiotic will be introduced to counteract and it will be used for another two days and again another antibiotic of different class will be introduced so with this there is a every chance that antibiotic resistance may be developed because of misuse of antibiotics and also the duration of therapy suppose if it is an amoxicillin or ampicillin or any other penicillin antibiotic it should be given for around 7 to 14 days based on the severity of the infections if it is a mild severity then it should be given for around 7 to 10 days if it is moderate severity 7 to 14 days and very severe then you can go for uh, more than 14 days 21 days now drug duplication if there is any uh, the same drug if it was given twice of different brands of different doses 
then it is considered as a drug duplication if there is any untreated indication which was uh, for which a drug has not been prescribed there is no indication for the drug a drug was prescribed but there is no indication and if there is any alternative route of administration that uh, if uh, the patient is uh, having uh, or patient is uh, having some problem with some route of administration so you have to suggest for any uh, alternate route of administration now if there any drug is found to be contraindicated now contraindication may be of two types in the sense one may be absolute contraindication one may be an uh, uh, absolute contraindication or relative contraindication absolute contraindication means uh, the drug should not be administered at any cost now relative contraindication in the sense if you uh, weigh the risk and benefit as the benefit is more if giving uh, by giving the drug than the risk that is involved then you have to uh, you can give the drug that is relative contraindication absolute contraindication means you should not give the drug at any cost or if any drug should be used cautiously then you have to intervene and you have to suggest the doctor that this drug should be used cautiously in this patient for this condition now coming to the role of pharmacy students in pharmacist intervention they have to identify the drug related problems whenever there is an opportunity for them now the opportunity should be created in order to identify the drug related problems for example by taking a medical history interview or by counseling a patient or by reviewing the treatment chart so by performing these activities it will create an opportunity for us to identify a drug related problem and the recommended solutions we have to recommend solutions for the problems that are identified the drug alternatives which are available suppose a, a drug is identified to cause a drug interaction now you have to give a suggestion such that the drug interaction will be minimized or drug interaction will be uh, no more in a sense you should mean uh, prevent the drug interaction now you should suggest the doctor with an alternative drug uh, which can be replaced such that there will be no drug interactions and for a su successful drug interaction always you have to uh, recommend solutions uh, which were backed up with the standard references also you should be very cautious while discussing the drug related problems with the patients uh, in the in the presence of patients if you discuss regarding the drug related problems in the presence of a patient then the patient may lose trust in the doctor that uh, the drugs the doctor's prescription has caused many drug related problems and the doctor is in the doctor's reputation can be in stake so you should make a certain uh, so you should be very cautious while discussing drug related problems with the doctor and you have to make sure that no patients were present while discussing or while having a talk with the doctor when uncertain you should never guess the answers or should never try to bluff the doctor that i have no the information and you should not give a misinformation a wrong information to the doctor because that information may be used in the patient by the doctor and if if there is any uh, untoward reaction that was developed by the patient then we we have to take the blame on us so therefore you have to always uh, go to the wards uh, go to the go back to your uh, 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 clinical pharmacy department they refer to the standard references that are available then come up with the answer where it was backed up with the references and you have to give it to the physician but you should never never try to guess or bluff the information a good clinical knowledge and interprofessional relationships are to be maintained with the doctors such for a successful intra interventions now after this uh, completion of your clinical pharmacy activities i included this topic of objective structured clinical examination oski for the interest of students uh, which i have learned it from the faculty development program that i have attended last year in jss college of pharmacy uti where i was very much attracted to the form of uh, training that uh, they are giving in jss college of pharmacy or jss university and uh, 
OSCE is nothing but objective structured clinical examination where the main objective of this examination is it's the modern type of examination which was especially used in health sciences to assess the competence and clinical skills that are per and, uh, clinical skill performances and we have to interpret the results of the uh, particular student it was first developed by university of dundee scotland in 1975 by dr harden where more than 50 countries adopt or they accept this uh, objective structured clinical examination oski now examiner's checklist for evaluating and training the students in a structured and a clinical way is seen in this uh, oski where performance based testing is used to measure candidates clinical competence where during this examination the students will pass through a series of stations around 10 to 15 stations stations are nothing but like cabins where an examiner will be present and student one student at a time can occupy that cabin so 10 to 15 cabins or they, they call it as stations are present and each the students will rotate from one station to another station and uh, they have to be uh, they have to pass through all the stations and if in each station they will be evaluated for uh, various roles and various competences and they will be tested and uh, the, uh, the students uh, performance will be measured and evaluated by the examiner who is present in that particular station they get evaluated example they have uh, uh, they make a role play or they will give a situation a clinical situation for which they have to immediately prepare for the answer uh, and they have to give a reply sometimes uh, they will bring their senior students and they may uh, give a clinical situations where the senior will play as a patient and the uh, as a clinical pharmacist you have to suggest the patient regarding what are the uh, lifestyle modifications needed to be done or what are the how the medications will be counseled so a live situations will be given to the patients such that a real skills the actual skills of the clinical pharmacist can be uh, seen in that uh, particular uh, oski examination it's a simulated stations simulated oski stations and there are real life oski stations uh, simulated oski stations are very much feasible and uh, cost effective ones but real life oski stations are a bit costlier to establish now they have oski have this own uh, pros and cons because it is very challenging to use it in the indian scenario because most of us are not aware this kind of uh, oski or this examination so uh, all the faculty needs to be trained appropriately Uh, regarding how to perform this uh, oski and the students also should be trained how to give this examination and how it will be useful for further studies in the uk or us or uh, any other countries who are accepting this uh, oski now coming to the board of pharmacy specialty specialty certification i have included this topic because most of uh, students has asked me regarding any if there is any specialization after pharmd so as the uh, mbbs students have their specializations like uh, gastroenterologist dermatologist oncologist etc does a pharmd student have the specialization to do after completion of a pharmd so my answer is yes they can go for a specialization where a special, they can be specialized in uh, uh, units like pediatrics uh, then uh, oncologist cardiovascular etc so board of pharmacy specialties uh, which was in uh, established in washington dc in 1976 uh, it is a gold standard uh, uh, certification where it will be it is accepted by most of the universities or most of the employers uh, they are accepting this certification uh, and they recruit us as a clinical pharmacists in their clinics or hospitals and uh, most of uh, i have seen most of the pharmacists are successful uh, after getting this certification 
So Board of Pharmacy Specialty BPS since 1976 it was involved in rec uh, recognizing the areas of specialties of practice and certifying the pharmacists in the following specialties. Now uh, it, it is it is considering the U.S. citizens and uh, Canada citizens as a local uh, local for certification and any other any other person who is applying for this certification other than us and canada are considered as international uh, persons so it is offering certification in ambulatory care so as a ambulatory care pharmacist critical care pharmacist nuclear pharmacy nutrition support pharmacy oncology pharmacy pediatric pharmacy pharmacotherapy pharm pharmacotherapy and of course psychiatric pharmacy so these are the eight specializations uh, where uh, the pharmacists are certified by the board of pharmacy specialties now bps bylaws they outline four primary responsibilities where they are involved in recognizing the specialties in pharmacy practice they set standards for certification and recertification process they also evaluate individuals who are seeking the certification and recertifications and also serves as a source of information and coordinating agency with for pharmacy specialties so this is a, a flow chart where we can see that how this uh, uh, bps has started uh, expanding its wings into different specializations so in 1976 it was uh, founded and in 1978 where it has offered only a uh, certification for only nuclear pharmacy and uh, in 1988 it has uh, included nutritional support and pharmacotherapy bccp board certification in clinic, uh, pharmacotherapy and of course uh, in psychiatry in 1994 oncology in 1996 2009 so similarly uh, in till in 2018 it also has included certification in compounding and ster compounded sterile preparations so a pharmacist who is interested in a, a particular specialty can apply for this certification after your pharmd degree then based on the eligibility criteria and your credibility is the you have to appear for an examination which was conducted by bps that is a twice in a year one is in the spring one is at the fall um, where you have to given a chance for appearing uh, twice for the bps examination the spring examination is conducted uh, during uh, april and june whereas the fall test dates fall around in the months of september and october Now, BPS certification is uh, accredited by NC NCCA, that is National Commission for Certifying Agencies. Now, BPS all BPS certifications are certified by NCCA and ICE. ICE stands for Institute for Cred uh, Credentiality Excellence. So, by visiting the website that was uh, given below or by visiting just bpsweb.org, one can check for the eligibility for uh, app uh, applying for these certifications. Now, in conclusion to my today's talk, a professional relationship should be established. So in a nutshell, a clinical pharmacist activities and pharmacist role, it should be uh, having a professional relationship to be established or maintained uh, with the healthcare professionals and to be a good clinical pharmacist a patient specific medical information must be collected it should be organized and should be recorded and maintained in a uh, individual patient data should be maintained with you patient specific medical information must be evaluated and a drug therapy plan must be developed uh, mutually with the patient and with the healthcare professional should be, uh, we should identify potential and actual drug related problems that the eight drug related problems that I quoted and you have to take active participation in resolving the drug related problems 
especially uh, recommendations in resolving and uh, of course it should be uh, accompanied by a standard references prevention of potential drug drug reactions and also if a drug related problem is identified then you have to come up with an action plan now collection of patient data identification of problems setting up of therapeutic goals evaluating treatment alternatives by weighing the risk and benefit ratio benefit should be more than the risk that uh, by giving the treatment individualization of your drug regimen like patient see if there are patient related factors and drug related factors so therefore you have to always individualize the drug regimen now monitoring the outcomes and finally documenting each and every activity is all what you have to do as a good clinical pharmacist to be a successful clinical pharmacist in conclusion again what we are trying to do is we are trying to do good so by maximizing clinical effect you can achieve it so by ma maximizing the clinical effect you can do good by minimizing the risk of treatment there will be no harm we should make sure that should, we can ensure that no harm can be done to the patient by minimizing or the risk of treatment and also the minimizing the cost is very much important such that patient can afford the treatment that the, that was given otherwise it may lead to uh, missed dose or uh, therapeutic failure so we have to make justice for the patient now respecting the patient choices is also important because what does the patient want we have to give the preference for the patient to give, make a choice now after all the efforts after all the clinical pharmacy services that you give we finally uh, expect the outcomes so expected outcomes or the possible outcomes may be it may be a positive outcome it may be a negative outcome or it may be a neutral outcome so positive outcome in the sense we have to continue the treatment until the course is completed so if there is a positive outcome then you have to continue with the treatment what was given because it is showing positive results but if there is a negative outcome now we have to uh, withdraw from the treatment that was currently giving and you have to reassess the available alternatives that are present such that uh, the outcomes may be better when compared to that uh, past outcomes now if there is no change at all that the condition of patient has neither improved or not deteriorated now you have to again reassess the current treatment that is given so again you have to replace a single drug you have to uh, go uh, and uh, see the literature so what drug can be used in a better way for this condition of the patient and you have to reassess the current treatment and suggest the drug which is very much suitable for the improvement of the or better outcomes of the patient so these are the possible outcomes that we can expect by giving our clinical pharmacy or delivering a clinical pharmacy services yeah questions so i completed uh, today's session and uh, the session is open for the questions over to you ishwar sir Uh, hi, Dr. Arun. Uh, that is really a wonderful session. Uh, even I have learned so many things today, like OSK or BPS, and a good explanation you have given. Uh, yes. And I can appreciate the way of presentation. Like I can say, you have discussed about the objectives and what are the things involved in that particular clinical pharmacy service. And you highlighted what is the yes. role of pharmacy student. So you have done justification to the title, whatever you have presented, clinical pharmacy services and the role of pharmacy students. I can say it is the need of the hour because uh, the PharmD is having a good scope in India. Uh, it is emerging like anything. And at this moment, if students itself, they are aware what have to be done as a part of clinical pharmacy yes, services, yes, they can engage more. They can serve more. Uh, really, they can serve more in association with the physician or with the teachers. And even uh, faculty are also viewing this one. So maybe wherever, uh, if any point they want to add to their existing knowledge, surely uh, they can add it. So that is really good coverage, wonderful coverage of the topic, whatever you have selected. So I appreciate you personally. It's really a wonderful session. Yes, Thank now we we'll go for the question and answer part. Definitely. definitely. So now I request the participants to please post the questions in the chat box. So whatever the questions you want to ask, 
the today's speaker you are most welcome uh, all the students or participants or viewers you can raise your question so here a, a basic question is there uh, from one student yeah difference between adr and side effects that's a very good question uh, question gaurav tripathi see uh, side effect is actually prolongation of a pharmacological action so side effect is basically prolongation of a pharmacological action for which the drug is really intended but adverse drug reaction is not the prolongation of a pharmacological action it's the untoward effect or unexpected effects or the noxious effects so a side effect for example you know if you take insulin uh, it increases your glucose levels but if you take insulin in excess it will uh, leads to hypoglycemia so hypoglycemia cannot be regarded as a drug reaction because it is a prolongation of the action of a drug so if you take an anti hypertensive drug in an overdose or in some person uh, if you take a dose without a uh, Uh, calculating the dose etc which is uh, based on the body weight or any other thing if it is uh, causing a hypotension so it is an uh, extension of a pharmacological action so these uh, can be considered as side effects but not as an adverse drug reaction but adverse drug reaction are caused because apart from the target receptor the drug binds to uh, receptors of different uh, systems therefore we we have adrs of different systems so gastrointestinal adrs cardiovascular adverse drug reactions the all systems so apart from the target suppose uh, a cardio selective suppose if it is a cardio selective drug it binds to only the receptors of a, a heart but if it is a non selective drug it also binds to receptors of a of a heart apart from the heart it also binds to some gastrointestinal or in pancreas or something else so it may cause adverse drug reactions uh, in which it binds apart from the target uh, receptor a target organ so that is an adverse drug side effect means it is absolutely the extension of pharmacological action of a drug so harun uh, here we have two similar questions or maybe earlier also few questions uh, what is the best option after b pharmacy and another similar question is uh, is it good to go for m pharm or pharm d post hoc or it and another similar question is uh, can you list some of the higher studies opportunities after pharm d so these are all similar questions so in your yes. perspective uh, are there any suggestions for the participants yeah after b pharmacy uh, opting uh an mpharmc either it may be mpharmc specializations like sutics or uh, pharmacy practice or pharmacology or opting a pharmd post baccalaureate course it mainly depends on the passion that you have towards the course it uh, the interest what you have in the course and your capability or ability uh, or if you find that it is uh, easy to go with the uh, course then you can opt it suppose you are interested in in hospital settings then you can opt for pharm d course or pharm d post baccalaureate course but if you are very much interested in, in interested in do, getting a job in industry and if you are interested in uh, have a passion passionate with the, the manufacturing then you can go for industrial pharmacy or pharmaceutics so it always depends on the candidate's uh, interest so but of course uh, uh there is a misconception that uh, the course will lead to a better future so <laughs> all courses which are introduced by for pharmacy or it may be mbbs or whatever it is all courses lead to a good uh, career but uh, it is you who has to perform well and you have to show a passionate and you have to show, show good marks and perform in the interview so a lot of things depends on how to be a successful person so selecting a course will not make you successful in my opinion <laughs> yeah, and here is another question to you yeah sri valika good afternoon sir is the is it effective and beneficial to pursue farm phd after farm d definitely phd after farm d is very beneficial 
and uh, especially if you want to build up make your career in academics or as a researcher so if you are passionate towards research and uh, if you like teaching you are welcome and of course a phd is what mandatory and the the re recent regulations of uh, ugc has also mandated that from 2021 phd is a mandatory for uh, to work even as a assistant professor in the university level or in the colleges so phd is a very good option and uh, myself uh, also a farmd phd person and you can build a good academic career as well as a career in a, uh, industry if you have a phd after farmd and uh, another question from kelvin john is it easy and possible to get job after farmd graduate in the foreign countries yes my answer is yes see most of the countries accept our indian farm d because indian farm d syllabus and guidelines are in accordance with us and uk so therefore but in order to uh, get the eligibility in the sense equivalency you have to give your equivalency examination fpge if you are aiming for us but uh, countries like uh, australia and of course uh, canada you can uh, uh, directly go uh, in the sense you can uh, go for iels some based on the states in the country, country of canada or us they mandate certain uh, examinations to be appearing so some you can give uh, if you are aiming from us you can go give naplex then iels for uh, uk and uh, other examinations canadian examinations so you can apply for a pr so with farmd you can you can get a good job but you need to uh, give certain examinations uh, and uh, the law examinations of the particular country so you have to go through the regulations and uh, my suggestion is to uh, contact a consultancy who can guide you properly yeah and there is another, another question sir yeah good evening sir is the covid situation give some suggestions to plan for projects well uh, it's a very good question uh, shanti uh, because uh, as uh, farmd students uh, are involved in uh, performing their activities in uh, hospitals now due to covid pandemic uh, we are restricted to, to the houses and uh, it's not suggestible for us to go to the ward rounds and do clinical projects and meet directly the patients but projects like uh, farm pa economic projects in the area of pharmaceutical economics in the area of pharmaceutical epidemiology in the area of clinical pharmacy so you can plan them where uh, there is no need for the for interacting with the patients so you can also develop a survey where uh, of your interest in the sense suppose if you take a, a toxicological studies or if you take any uh, cancer studies you can uh, develop a survey in the google forms and you can circulate it and make the persons to answer them so you can also tar, uh, be uh, specific you can give your forms or survey to only those patients who are suffering from so and so disease make them uh, uh, what you call but it is possible only for the patients who are educated to answer those surveys so you can plan it in such kind of things yeah and uh, ravindra koduri how to document drug information query well uh, i don't know from which college you are but uh, uh, you will a uh, college uh, every document or every uh, clinical pharmacy activity it may be a drug information it may be adverse drug reaction or uh, patient counseling you you will have a well do designed documentation form so i think there is there is a documentation form developed and uh, you need to uh, document it in the documentation form that is there so exclusive documentation form should be designed by the clinical pharmacy department of your concerned college such that uh, it should be distributed to the students and if it can be also made online in the sense soft copies of the uh, particular documentation forms can be given and you can just uh, fill the form and give it for adr documentation uh, you can uh, go to the website of uh, cdscvo where uh, you can download the adr form 
and it can be it is used as a standard uh, form for reporting adverse drug reactions now anjana shankar sir can you list uh, what are the highest studies option after pharmd as i told you uh, as a, in my presentation the bps certification where you can go for apply for the bps certification i have gone through the website where they are uh, asking for the original transcripts from the university to check the credibility of your eligibility and another important thing is you should have a licensure so you should be a registered pharmacist from uh, in, uh, either from india or uh, from uh, us some some indian pharmacists or who have completed pharmd they uh, they went to us and of course they got the license there because after working in community pharmacies they got uh, after 5 years one of my friends has got license now these uh, indian pharmacies who are uh, having the us licensure can apply for bccs and the BC, BC, BBP, bbs certification and they can uh, go for their uh, studies in the sense higher studies where this certification is very much acceptable as a gold standard by the clinical pharmacy departments in the us and uk and good evening sir by sunaina can we pursue uh, in surgery diploma in surgery after completing pharmd uh so it depends on the interest if you are really interested yes you can perform the diploma in surgery but after doing that it should be uh, the certificate should be given by a authorized or recognized university so you can you can uh, join the diploma in surgery and we are eligible pharmd people are eligible because we are having scientific background and of course we are uh, we have read uh, many uh, subjects which are related to this so therefore you can go for this diploma in surgery if any university is offering it but please recheck whether the university is of a genuine one or not before uh, giving that now amruta sawath in which subjects pharmd students can do phd so subject in the sense uh, a clinical project is usually being selected by a pharmd student because are, if you are a pharmd student uh, you should choose uh, uh, projects in the area of uh, clinical pharmacy pharmacoeconomics pharmacoepidemiology and also in different specializations you can choose your uh, uh, projects now gwen sabi is it possible to do md after pharmd so you can provide details no sabi unfortunately no you cannot perf, uh, go for md because md is only for uh, uh, those who has completed mbbs and with pharmd you can't do md no after b pharm what is the time period for pharmd after b pharm uh, you will be giving your examinations pg set or something and uh, it is for 3 years pharmd post baccalaureate course is for 3 years after b pharmacy it's a 3 years course where you will be admitted uh, in the fourth year lateral entry fourth year of pharmd so you have to uh, uh, join in get admitted in the fourth year of pharmd fourth year fifth year and the sixth year internship so it will take 3 years for you sayed zia may peace be upon you publication of case studies do help in jobs publication websites which are trustful a very good question uh, because due to increase in this uh, fake publications uh, or journals who are uh, paid journals so publication nowadays is a questionable thing and uh, public public uh, publishing your paper in a reputed journal is also a challenging nowadays so be, it all it all depends on the type of study you have done and the strength of your study and the statistical methods that you have employed and the way you have designed your manuscript according to the author guidelines that was given uh, by the journal particular journal so we already know that standard journals like elsewhere then of course uh, we are having the in indexed with the pubmed indexed with the uh, Uh, mbesco and of course scopus index journals are to be preferred so always go to a website of a journal and check for the indexing and abstracting section 
where you you should find that if the journal is indexed with Scopus, PubMed, and uh, Embase, then it's a good and reputed journal. So Ashwati Anil, good evening, sir. How many years of experience required to work as a clinical pharmacist abroad? So as a, to work in abroad as a clinical pharmacist, first you need to give certain examinations. So it also depends on the country you choose, and it takes around uh, four to five years. Uh, to work as a clinical pharmacist so you have to work as a community pharmacist first get the license our licensure get registered over there then you can uh, apply for the clinical pharmacist job now salipi gaulikar how can we go into clinical trials after farm day very good question this is uh, selecting uh, clinical research as a career after farm day <laughs> and the farmd persons are the most eligible persons to have a career in clinical trials now clinical research industries are outsourcing industries like uh, uh, cro's like quantiles iqvia these are the cro's where they are acting as a cro's for the clinical trials which are going on in our uh, india so therefore you can apply you, uh, you can post your resume in uh, websites like uh, pharma tutor or monsterjob.com etc where if there is any job notification or if the persons or the seniors who are already working in the clinical research industry or pharmacovigilance industry they can guide you if there is any uh, interview walk in interview then you can appear for uh, interview and go ap apply for cra clinical research associate so clinical research associate is a good career in clinical clinical research now amtul saba good evening sir can we go for icmr fellowship after family definitely yes you can go for a icmr fellowship but uh, check for the eligibility guidelines it is based on the project icmr projects are uh, more of uh, medical oriented where mbps is the uh, mbps and md is the eligibility and uh, we have to uh, take certain steps that even farmd should be included as a eligibility criteria for the icmr uh, projects that is going to be developed good evening sir uh, which different farm, what is the difference between farmd and clinical pharmacy in subjects oh my god uh, i don't know the name but uh, clinical maybe he is looking for uh, farmd and maybe ms clinical pharmacy or some courses with no, their abroad clinical is pharmacy a farm is a part of a pharmacy course see farmd is a course or a degree but clinical pharmacy is not a degree it's the subject or the, which is new which is you need to practice now clinical pharmacy is the thing that you need to practice suppose if maybe you he, Uh, Doctor Arun, maybe in foreign countries the clinical pharmacy exists as one course. Maybe he is asking in foreign countries. Yeah, yeah, perspective maybe, also. maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe I'm from in I'm from in clinical pharmacy or I'm clinical pharmacy. pharmacy maybe. Yeah, hmm. that's that's the thing. Okay, but clinical pharmacy is the thing that you are going to practice it. If you practice clinical pharmacy, you can earn in the sense if you uh, give services like drug information, and if you give patient counseling, uh, then these are the practicing clinical pharmacy. of course and farmd is a course of course yeah. now behra chatrapati uh, sir i have heard about clinical scs after farmd we can we opt uh, the field what are the opportunities yes yes we can opt for scs but uh, only when if you are interested in statistics so what kind of careers in the sense in a clinical research industry there is always a requirement of a statistician where uh, uh, the data what was uh, obtained after the clinical trial that should be analyzed by a statistician by using some softwares like sas so if you are interested in in, uh, in sas please look at the uh, what you call job opportunities that you are going to get in the industry so most probably after clear sas as you are uh, come uh, after farmd if you uh, go for a sas program then the one who offers the sas program please ask them what kind of companies in india especially offering jobs and what is the what you call cadre that they are going to offer you mohammad shahzad how can we go to r and d department of pharmacy 
uh, PharmD is actually uh, most of clinical oriented, and going to an RD department is a uh, of another uh, this thing. In the sense, you might have opted for uh, any other uh, M form or or any other thing for going research and development, but it is hard to go for an uh, RD after PharmD. Research and development require it requires uh, M form analysis and M form suitix persons, and of course chemistry. Not farmed. I don't think so. Any other questions? I think no further questions regarding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one second. Yeah, uh, Shruti Ratna. Good evening, sir. Uh, is doing a fellowship a good choice after PharmD, and uh, what will be the future if you choose it? What kind of fellowship you are going to talk about? Uh, uh, for example, one of our students from Andhra University, Pawan, has opted for fellowship in oncology. Then, of course, he he has a good future in oncology as an oncology pharmacist. Yes, it is always a good uh, good thinking that uh, if any uh, hospital or any university offers you a uh, fellowship, please go for it because it is like a BPS certification. You will get you will get certified in that fellowship. So it is of two years where you you will get a stipend and also you will get a fellowship certificate where it is an added qualification to your uh, already existing pharmacy. Good evening, sir. Can we do M form after farm D? Obviously, you can do, but uh, so, uh, vice versa question. Are we yes, able to do a farm D after M form? <laughs> yes, yes, you can do. It. There's no restriction. It based on. It. But why you want to do? The question is why. Why you want to waste again another two? Uh, but uh, see, uh, doing uh, M form after farm D is okay in the sense for two years you can do our M form C. But uh, doing farm day after M farm is again uh, we have to spend three years because firstly you have done B farm, then M farm six years, then farm day three years, so nine years of education. Instead, you can opt for a PhD after your M farm C. Right, issue, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. That's obviously, they have yeah. to look for the higher studies rather than parallel studies. Higher studies rather. So they yeah, have yeah. to fix in a career in one path. In that path, they have to excel. Not See, PharmD is recognized as a postgraduate course. So why you want to do M Farm again? Double P, double post graduation. Now, Vaishnavi Chavare, good evening, sir. After PharmD, what is the which is the beneficial jobs in India or in foreign country? Um, in foreign country, now in this pandemic situation, uh, I I don't suggest. To go for a foreign country for the time being, and uh, it's always better to get opportunity. In India, you have many opportunities, but we are not exploring those things. So my my option is to be in India <laughs> for the time being, for the next uh, four or five years. Good evening, sir. What skills are to be cultivated by PharmD graduate to get into clinical research? Uh, very good question, uh, Sushmita. Where I think I don't know which in which year of PharmD you are, but in your fifth year PharmD you have a subject clinical research where you should be very thorough with the ICA GCP guidelines because every clinical every employee who are involved in clinical trials need to be having a certification on uh, ICA and GCP. So he should be a ICA GCP certified person in order to work as a clinical trial personnel. So please brush up with your clinical uh, research uh, subject where uh, you should be familiarized with the ICA GCP guidelines and uh, also with the roles and responsibilities of different uh, clinical trial personnel. Like what is the roles and responsibility of sponsor 
of a CRO, of a principal investigator, or of a other clinical trial personnel. So you should be have a good knowledge, thorough knowledge regarding those. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, that's uh, really uh, uh, out there. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, really I really good left an answer. very good to have your session also very effective uh, dr arun uh, it went on very well thank you sir uh, good discussion happened and good type of questions and the uh, questions yeah yeah higher uh, studies for job or uh, yes. they have participated very well it indicates their interest uh, in the yes, scope of family or after family or job yes so yes conclude the session by asking one last question from my side uh, yes okay. definitely sir uh, 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 a common question Sort of debate went on earlier also. So, what is your perspective in the importance of a physician and a pharmacy person? That means, are they equal or their weightages are varying, or it's not like comparing one person with another? Everyone will have their own role. So, what is your perspective related to a physician and the pharmacy role in the healthcare sector? See, they have their own importance in their own uh, perspectives. In the sense, uh, a physician is an expert in diagnosis. so he is very much into uh, medical oriented in the sense to assess the signs and symptoms so based on the signs and symptoms and based on the laboratory investigations he will come to a conclusion that patient is having so and so disease so he is a very expert uh, he is expertized in diagnosing with the disease a patient is suffering from but we are expertized in treatment plan or pharmaceutical care plan or designing a good uh, individualization of therapy and etc dosage adjustments and etc so we are completely concerned with only treatment part we can suggest doctors that so and so treatment is best for you for this patient in the so and so conditions so this is the treatment plan that i am suggesting and doctor as he is in the decision making role his decision will be the final one even though you suggest so we are restricted only to suggest it but we can't uh, uh, what you call direct uh, yeah without the yeah yeah without uh, the concerning the doctor or without the acceptance of a doctor uh, clinical pharmacist uh, cannot change the prescription because prescription always should be signed only by a doctor but uh, some uh, recently pci feels that of course he has issued some guidelines that we can pharmacists can uh, prescribe medicines of only some classes okay but uh, i don't uh, they have not given any clarification regarding the prescribing but what i feel is prescription should be uh, solely with the clinical pharmacist because we are good prescribers so a doctor always a doctor and a pharmacist will make a good healthcare team both to be in in concern with the both they have to uh, get uh, design a good treatment plan so doctor will tell you what are the signs and symptoms and etc he will diagnose it and based on the disease clinical pharmacist will suggest a good treatment plan and uh, both should agree they should work in coordination that's what which is uh, expected but unfortunately doctors uh, most of the doctors will not accept us they read only pharmacology as a one a subject in our semester so how can a doctor prescribe a give a prescription uh, uh, without having the complete knowledge on So here Mechanic. the thing is like uh, everyone will have their own importance, and because of their education, knowledge, diagnosis, treatment plan, they can do better. And as yes. with the support of clinical pharmacist, the healthcare uh, perspective can be made still better. So in India, with the introduction of this pharmacy role and clinical pharmacist role, even in is there only with multi-specialty hospitals. And now I think I am able. It is slowly increasing in every hospital also the role yes. of pharmacy. or the clinical pharmacist personnel we are seeing a job sector so, so the doctor as well as the pharmd person or clinical pharmacist go hand by hand it's not like yeah, uh, it is a major role or it is they need to complement they should go hand by hand uh, to respect themselves both should respect each other 
together and uh, they should be, they should be a good they make a good health team even the nurse yes. is a good yes. so a doctor a pharmacist and a nurse yes. will be a good health team and the decision should be coming from inputs of uh, all these three yes very good so overall i can say i can conclude uh, today it happened a very nice session and it is the 10th webinar in myvo series and i am very happy to have your session on board and i hope all the participants are also really very happy they are watching it very keenly and their questions are very impressive and your explanations yes, yes. are good so the whole session uh, the 10th webinar of myvo group went on very well i can say it's an excellent presentation so thank you very much dr k santosh arun kumar uh, for your thank valuable you, time and your, uh, on the presentation yeah mm. i i would like to acknowledge a few persons especially my guru and please, guide please go ahead uh, yeah please. professor jeevaratna madam who is a retired professor from andhra okay. university is she is my guide and uh, without her blessings uh, i would not have reached to this platform uh, give, uh, act as a speaker she is always guiding me uh, from behind and uh, even uh, as long as she is my guide i am her student and uh, i also <laughs> to thank uh, professor uh, k v ramanmuthi sir principal andhra university a e college of pharmaceutical sciences andhra university for encouraging me and also uh, guiding me in uh, whatever the difficulties i face in my career so i am in debt to also to dr ishwar sir who has given me an opportunity <laughs> to act as a speaker in this my webinar so it's my first webinar and i hope it uh, everyone has uh, taken a good uh, information from me and uh, i will do my best in the next webinar so uh, for uh, <laughs> collaboration with my bo team thank you so Very much good. most welcome and uh, yeah yeah you deserve it uh, because of your knowledge and our friendship i could observe you keenly so because of that i am i able to request you to give your knowledge sharing to the participants and family students who are very eager to learn i know the yes, eagerness yes. of family students they want to learn more and they want to implement it i particularly did, I did the help section too many questions uh, i was uh, <laughs> i think this I, is the session yeah, which we have yeah. a good number of questions we got so good many questions, questions in this session yeah, yeah. 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 so if they have yeah. still they have any questions they can write to myvo group at the rate of gmail.com which i can share with you and we can respond to no issue sure, so sure, all this uh, concluding remarks uh, now i am uh, here to conclude the session for today's thing so we'll come up again with a new topic and new speaker and to address the audience so thank you very much dr ks arun kumar so thank you very much thank, thank you sir. all the participants for participating and giving your valuable time thank you yes Thank you thank you so much